What is up YouTube? My name is Tender Director, and today I am taking a look at this totally new and original trend. It's called the Iceberg Explanation Video, and today I am looking at the music genre Iceberg, created by Reddit user LVLRsquake. Now this Iceberg goes over every genre in existence. There is not a single genre that is not on this image, and I will be covering them all. This is by far the most in-depth iceberg list on the entire YouTube platform. So grab a soda and some popcorn and let's get into it. Okay, starting at the top of the list, we have Electro Swing. And this was pretty popular around the early to mid 2010s. You'd hear it in a lot of gameplay videos or just YouTube videos in general. It uses 1920s swing music or jazz music and combines it with modern club and dance music. You would hear a lot of people like Caravan Palace. That was a pretty popular electro swing musician of the time. I'm not really a huge fan. It kind of sounds gimmicky, kind of annoying, but you know, some people like it, so that's cool. Pop rock is just like pop courses, pop vocals, pop writing, pop singing with rock instrumentals or just like normal, you know, guitars, bass, drums. Not a totally like usual pop instrumental. You can look mainly at bands like The Beatles or Weezer, as well as bands like Oasis or David Bowie. Video game soundtracks. I mean, this is so varied and wide. It, this is literally any video game that has music in it. Uh, here are a few good examples that I really like. I guess I should talk about reggae first. Uh, it kind of originated in the 1960s with a pretty standard 4x4 time signature, which is just the amount of beats per bar of a song. Usually staccato guitar notes, which is when each note is really detached and separated from one another. Pretty heavy themes of Rastafariism. Now later down the line, especially nowadays, this style of music that originated in Jamaica would later be used by a lot of pop musicians. If you're familiar with musicians like Daddy Yankee or Major Lazer, those reggae aesthetics were, would be later used in pop songs and this is also called reggaeton. Future Bass is a pretty lighthearted version of electronic dance music, trap, and dubstep, characterized by pretty woozy and mellow production, lots of synths, and a lot of sound effects. Prime example of a pretty popular future based musician would be Marshmallow. Country deviates from folk music in Europe and also stems from blue music in the south of the 1920s and 30s. If you know the musician Robert Johnson, he only recorded one year of music and allegedly sold his soul to the devil and produced the song Me and the Devil and later died in 1938. It was pretty unknown how he died, but he actually died from syphilis. Still, many people like to say he died from selling his soul to the devil. This style of blues guitar playing would be incorporated into country music now, and I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with it. These country artists like Ernest Tubb would later take the sounds of blues music and folk music and give it a more poppy and western sound. Synthwave is an homage to 80s culture and 80s synth music, and a lot of dance music of that time, and pop as well. There's a lot of video games and movies that take a lot of influence from Synthwave, like Good Time and Uncut Gems, as well as Mr. Robot and Drive. And it's even kind of influenced a lot of popular music now, like a lot of The Weeknd's newer stuff kind of has a Synthwave thing. Next we have Metalcore, and I don't really know why this one is so high, it, it's weirdly kind of out of place. It takes elements of hardcore punk and combines it with metal. A lot of metalcore is pretty raw and in your face, but a lot of it is also really melodic and has a lot of emo elements. You have pretty popular artists like Bring Me The Horizon, which kind of has a more emo or melodic tone to it. And then you have people like Converge that have way more of like a hardcore punk feel and are, really, and are a lot more aggressive. Chiptune is a style of music produced on 16 or 8-bit hardware, and it comes from a lot of video games of the 80s, especially the NES, and then later of the 90s, like the SNES that used 16-bit hardware. It's incorporated in a lot of stuff, mainly video game soundtracks of the 80s and 90s. Ska notably has three waves, the first wave being really similar to reggae with horns. The second wave Ska is reinvented into something called two-tone, which is combined with rock and new wave. 
The third wave would emerge again in the late 80s, and this would combine with heavier rock elements and as well as hardcore punk, while still utilizing the ska instrumentals, and this would later be called ska punk. Some key examples would be Operation Ivy or Goldfinger. If you've ever heard the song Superman, it, it was used in the Tony Hawk soundtrack. Hard rock is just a form of rock music that emerged around the 60s, and it basically just takes rock elements and turns up the volume, beefs everything up into 11, usually louder and more aggressive playing, fat as well as faster playing and more complex guitar tones. A lot of hard rock would be mixed into the heavy metal sound that would emerge in the late 60s, like Black Sabbath. But hard rock is usually pretty broad most of the time. Some notable hard rock bands are Led Zeppelin, which combined elements of blues rock and folk rock. You also had people like Jimi Hendrix that were combining it with psychedelic rock. And then you had later bands like Queens of the Stone Age being a personal favorite for mine, combining it with elements of alternative rock and stoner rock. Christian rock is pretty self-explanatory. It's just rock music with Christian themes and lyrics, usually being pretty uplifting, most of the time being played in churches. EDM, which stands for electronic dance music, is a pretty broad genre of dance music and electronic music, obviously. It applies to most mainstream electronic music, which started off from house music and techno in the 80s. In the 90s, the genre started getting much more popular, especially in places like Europe where Eurodance started, as well as trance. However, these genres didn't take off as much in the US. Later down the line in the 2000s, it would become much more popular as musicians like Daft Punk would break the charts of the US finally. Heavy metal is pretty much the origin of metal music to the mainstream. I kind of see a lot of people apply the term heavy metal to any type of metal music, but generally heavy metal is very similar to hard rock, but usually more darker with subject matter as much as well as playing and atmosphere. Albums like Paranoid by Black Sabbath would kickstart the heavy metal genre. Later down the line, a lot of hair metal bands would take sounds of heavy metal, like Motley Crue as well as Def Leppard, and incorporate it into a more 80s conventional pop sound. Next up we have cloud rap. I'm a little confused why this is like the highest rap term so far. The cloud coming from the very ethereal or hazy production, which is very dreamlike as well, a lot of reverb is used. Producer Clams Casino is a pretty big figure in the cloud rap scene. He would produce for the likes of ASAP Rocky and Lil B, a very early figure in cloud rap. Groove metal is a style of metal that occurred in the 90s, and it's basically an evolution of thrash metal that occurred in the 80s. Guitar playing and overall speed would be slowed down as there was more of an emphasis on heavier syncopated rhythms instead of long guitar solos. It was a pretty big and influential genre of the time, even if there weren't a ton of bands carrying it, mainly Pantera. Indie rock kinda means at one point two different things. I mean, the name comes from independent, so it comes from a lot of independent rock of the late 70s and early 80s, but now it kind of just means an overall sound that sounds similar to those 80s indie rock bands. Indie rock had a very DIY atmosphere, and it was the birth of a lot of alternative rock of the late 80s and early 90s. Because these bands were independent and weren't really getting a lot of help from labels, uh, it had a very DIY and raw sound, while still keeping those kind of pop rock aesthetics. You had bands like Pixies who led to a lot of alternative rock trends of the 90s, as well as newer bands like The Strokes, which aren't independent, but they still kind of carry that alternative rock sound. Post-punk is just an evolution of a lot of punk rock that occurred during the 70s. It took styles of punk rock, but made it occasionally more atmospheric or experimental. A lot of post-punk at the time was often darker, although not always. Some post-punk bands would take elements of punk rock and add funk, disco, even jazz, like Talking Heads. Other bands took punk and made it much darker, like Joy Division. And some bands even made their music sound more poppy and danceable, like Gang of Four, while still keeping the general punk aesthetic and lyrical content. Indie pop started in the early 80s and has a very DIY approach, with some rock elements and deviates a lot from post-punk. Pianos and strings are often used and is pretty similar to a lot of pop music, but not necessarily what you'd hear on the radio. The same thing about a lot of indie pop not necessarily being independent, just kind of carrying the style, like I said on indie rock, can still be applied here. 
Vaporwave had a pretty brief popularity in the early 2010s. There's kind of a lot of negative connotation of Vaporwave just being songs slowed down or just a sample being looped over and over. But there are a lot of musicians that take the sounds of Vaporwave and really accelerate it to a whole new idea. Vaporwave usually samples a lot of pop, R&B, jazz, or funk. These samples are often modified with loops, pitching, cutting, glitching, overall similar to a style called Plunderphonics, which is just music based off of samples. A lot of Vaporwave is dedicated to a lot of 80s and 90s pop culture, kind of like Synthwave. You've probably heard of Floral Shop, but there are musicians like Def's Dynamic Shroud that take the sounds of Vaporwave and really elevate it to a whole new thing. K-pop is a style of contemporary pop music originating from Korea that has become very popular in the West in recent years, usually composed of girl bands or boy bands. There are pretty similar elements from a lot of American and Western pop or electro pop as well as R&B. You've probably heard of BTS. Instrumental hip hop is just hip hop that is instrumental, you guessed it. You have producers like Jay Dilla, who was heavily influential to a lot of hip hop production of the 90s and 2000s, as well as Madlib, who's pretty infamous for his collaborations with MF Doom as well as Freddie Gibbs. Trap rap was once a pretty underground movement started in the late 90s, especially in the southern United States, mainly Memphis, but it's now one of the largest subgenres of rap music. It's more defined by its lyrical qualities more than its instrumentals, usually just being trap instrumentals. Viewer discretion is advised. General themes include rising out of poverty, as well as illegally selling drugs or hustling, which is where the term trap comes from. Most rappers you find on the radio are usually trap rappers. Pop punk takes the rawness and aggression of hardcore punk, but mixes it with catchiness and more lighthearted elements of pop. Green Day is a pretty prime example of this. Blues rock takes the style of blues music and blue chords in, from the 1930s, like I was talking about earlier, and combines them with more rock instrumentation. Artists like the Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin would give this genre notoriety in the 60s and 70s. Alternative rock is pretty similar to indie rock. It goes against the norm of what was popular at the time, but it quickly became one of the most popular forms of rock music at the time. So the term doesn't really fit anymore. What is considered alternative rock in the mid 80s doesn't really apply to the 90s as that style would become popular. But the term still holds because bands have very similar styles to that music. Bands like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, and Radiohead were still pretty popular, but kept this alternative rock sound. New Wave would come after post-punk in the late 70s and would combine some sounds of post-punk with a more pop-oriented sound. Synth pop was also a pretty big element. A lot of New Wave took guitars and made them jerkier and more energetic. There were a lot of elements of disco as well. Bands like Talking Heads and New Order would pivotalize the sound. Baroque pop is pop mixed with classical instrumentation, named after the European classical music of the 17th and 18th century. Guitars aren't really used that often, but drum kits and synths are used pretty frequently to add some extra instrumentation. Bands like the Beach Boys are most well known for the Baroque pop sound. Glitch Hop combines hip hop instrumentation with glitch music and even IDM, which I'll get to in a second. Glitching techniques are a lot similar to the ones I described in Vaporwave. Glitch Hop can often be very psychedelic. Some Glitch Hop has rapping over it, while some is just electronic music that's hip hop oriented. If you want a good rapping example, I'd suggest JPEG Mafia. And if you want an electronic example, I would say Flying Lotus, which is probably one of my favorite musicians ever. Now there's also another type of Glitch Hop. It has the same name, but it's pretty different. Usually it's referred to Glitch Hop EDM. I don't really know why it's called, because it doesn't really have the glitch elements, but it's a more like future based sound. I'm not really sure what it is, but I saw it while scrolling down YouTube and I, it had the same name, so I don't know. There's two different examples of Glitch Hop. Bubblegum bass, or more commonly known as PC music or hyperpop. Follows conventional pop music of the 2010s, but takes it to a very extreme level. The volume is turned up, there's really odd instrumentation and synths, vocals are often pitched. It takes a lot of influence from dance and electronic music, kickstarted by artists like Sophie and Arca. 
There's also the record label PC Music, which is operated by A.G. Cook, and he's also a pretty influential producer, and a lot of bubblegum bass is released on that label. Britpop comes from styles of rock, alternative rock, and indie pop, originating in the UK, reaching its peak during the mid-90s. In comparison to a lot of grunge and alternative rock trends in the 90s, Britpop is a lot more traditional and comparable to early pop rock. Lyrics sometimes deal with British culture and politics. Most well-known bands are Blur, Oasis, and Pulp. Shoegaze originated in the mid to late 80s, springing off from a lot of dream pop, noise pop, and psychedelic rock. The term shoegaze comes from bands staring at their feet during live shows, focusing on all the guitar pedals they were using. Bands started to experiment with tons of reverb, guitar pedals, and ethereal soundscapes. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know what reverb is by now, I've been saying it a lot, I should probably explain what it is. It's basically a continued sound emerging after the notes have already been played. Basically an echo in musical sense. Loveless by My Bloody Valentine is a pretty essential listen if you want to get into shoegaze. There's also bands like Slow Dive and Ride. Shoegaze would later be incorporated into a lot of other genres, even metal. Bands like Deftones, Death Heaven, and Wolves in the Front Room would take the reverby style of shoegaze and apply it to a metal sense. Synth pop is pretty self-explanatory. It's a conventional pop structure, but with electronic synths and a general digital instrumental palette. It gained notoriety in the 70s when synth technology really started popping off. Most synth pop nowadays still kind of has that retro feel of it, replicating a lot of synth pop as the majority of synths do still sort of have that vintage feel. Bands like Depeche Mode, New Order, and The Human League would popularize the genre in the 80s, but newer artists like MGMT still kind of take that retro sound even to today. There's also artists like Tame Impala and George Clanton, who's pretty underrated and personal favorite of mine. Industrial metal, kind of weird how this is the first industrial tinged genre on the list. You know, you figure you put industrial first, but I guess it's more popular. Industrial is later down this list, so I'll kind of explain it a bit, but it's, it's generally a very mechanical kind of side of music. It's a combination of metal and industrial music, and it uses a lot of drum machines, sampling, and manipulation of vocals. There's also usually a lot of distortion, and guitars are usually down-tuned for a general creepy and a mechanical sound. Notorious bands are Godflesh, Strapping Young Lad, and Rammenstein. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. New Age is somewhat a form of classical music, but it's kind of different at the same time. It's generally pretty relaxing and peaceful. Some do use drum beats, but a lot often don't. A lot of later New Wave would use a lot of synths and is kind of electronic oriented, but some is also just completely orchestral, with instruments like flute, pianos, and guitars, as well as strings, even some folk music can be added in. To summarize it, New Age was just a pretty popular relaxing form of music in the 60s and 70s. It can still be found in a lot of soundtracks too, especially in video games like Ocarina of Time and Chrono Trigger. I guess you could say it's kind of like the lo-fi beats, chill and study twos 24-7, but for the 70s and 80s. It's generally not really meant to be examined super hard, it's usually just nice relaxing background music. AOR stands for Adult Oriented Rock, it's similar to a lot of pop rock of the late 70s and 80s. A lot of hair metal can be styled as AOR, as well as a lot of jazz rock. There's also not too much of a difference between a lot of pop rock, progressive rock, and hard rock. It's usually very slick and clean. I think the best way to describe it is music that your dad would listen to. Some pretty good examples are bands like Styx, Boston, and Ario Speedwagon. Just kind of very clean, epic, bombastic rock music. Ambient is music that can be placed in the background and is designed to kind of just blend in with the atmosphere. It focuses on atmosphere and sounds more than the structure. It has less meaning and it's more of a soundscape. This one is truly the OG lo-fi hip-hop. <laughs> Ambient would grow in popularity due to Brian Eno, which many cite as the founder of ambient music. One time he was sick and somebody played a record for him, but the music was too quiet, but he couldn't turn it up. So he just listened to the quiet music with rain pouring outside and he realized it sounded quite pleasant and nice. So he would later begin to work with this more quiet and atmospheric sound. Albums like Music for Airports by the aforementioned Brian Eno, as well as Selected Ambient Works Volume 2 by Aphex Twin are pretty popular ambient picks. Another personal favorite of mine is Pop by Gas. It's super luscious and reminds me of the forest, basically like the album cover, and it really just puts you in a completely different atmosphere when you listen to it, which I really think is what ambient is supposed to do.
Sunshine pop is kind of a weird term in my opinion. It's usually very happy and sweet pop of the 60s, but not to be confused with the Beach Boys for some reason, a lot of people say that. Even if the genre is pretty much credited towards them, they don't count for some reason. A lot of it can kind of have some jazzy and bossa nova stuff, which I don't know, it just seems kind of pointless. I don't really know if genres should be based on an overall mood. I feel like genres can incorporate any mood really. But I guess to summarize it, Sunshine Pop is just this really happy form of pop music from the 60s. Post-rock is a pretty interesting one. It's when rock bands stopped using their guitars solely for riffs and more focused on textures and atmospheres of the plane. So bands would begin to use the guitar more as a soundscape. Bands like Talk Talk and Slint would take this guitar-oriented sound and make it really atmospheric, Talk Talk kind of adding elements of ambience in it. And Slint would produce this really dark and gloomy atmospheric sound based off their guitars, which wasn't really done before them, even in the 90s. Later down the line, bands would start to add more instruments like strings, horns, electronics would be added, as well as drones. A lot of ambient elements would be used. You could classify a lot of post-rock bands later down the line in the 2000s as sounding really epic and bombastic, such as Godspeed You, Black Emperor which their album Lift Your Skinny Fists Like Antennas to Heaven is pretty infamous for being an essential post-rock album. Psychedelic rock is rock music that came out in the 60s and it's inspired heavily by the drug scene and hippie culture of the time. It's rock music that sounds kind of trippy and emulates what music might sound like under the influence or kind of surreal trance. Now nowadays I don't really find a lot of psychedelic rock of the 60s really trippy, especially now there's much more trippier music, as technology has improved since then. But definitely at the time, putting Jimi Hendrix on must have felt like dropping acid in audio form. And even now, Jimi Hendrix is still one of the greatest guitar players ever in my opinion. He really changed the way the guitar could be played and I feel like if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have a lot of the rock music we would have nowadays. You have other bands as well like The Doors and Cream. IDM, which stands for Intelligent Dance Music, is kind of a shitty gatekeeping genre term. So I guess it's like smart EDM. I mean, even a lot of artists in the IDM scene would critique the term, especially Aphex Twin. But I do kind of get in the 90s why it was used. It definitely sounded a lot different from a lot of EDM. It's a somewhat broad term. I would say it's somewhat like if you made EDM more introspective or intricate. In some ways, maybe more complex, but not always. A lot of IDM artists are attributed to Warp Records, which is a pretty pivotal electronic label to the genre. They would release really pivotal music under artists like Aphex Twin, Autechre, Square Pusher, Flying Lotus, and Boards of Canada. Chillwave isn't even really a thing anymore, it was, it's kind of a dead genre now. It's attached to a lot of indie pop music and really kickstarted in 2008 and kind of ended around 2011. A lot of chill wave has elements of dream pop and is pretty reverb heavy and sometimes lo-fi. It's just kind of attached to a lot of underground pop music that was really hazy and psychedelic. Most of these chill wave musicians have kind of moved on but they're still kind of attached to the chill wave term. Songs like Blessa by Toro y Moi would really help the genre rise in popularity. There are also other artists like Passion Pit, Neon Indian, and Washed Out that really helped the genre grow. Conscious hip hop is rap music that either deals with political issues or social issues. I feel like this term is kind of weird because a lot of hip hop is embedded in conscious issues and same thing with punk music or rock music, but you wouldn't really call those like conscious punk or conscious rock. It just kind of seems like a bit of a weird term. Artists like Kendrick Lamar, a Tribe Called Quest, Nas, and Public Enemy are pretty well known for rapping a lot about a lot of these issues, like religion, racism, culture, and the economy, as well as other American issues. Industrial hip hop is taking that same mechanical industrial sound that I was talking about earlier, but putting it with rap music. Lyrics are usually pretty aggressive and disturbing. There's pretty loud and noisy production, as well as using a lot of distortion. Def Grips are a pretty prime example. There's also other artists like Dalek, Clipping, and JPEG Mafia. 
Dubstep is a bit of a doozy. There's kind of two definitions for dubstep. The first one is kind of the OG dubstep, and then there's another term that people like to call bro step. Now, dubstep would originally start in the UK around the early 2000s with a pretty big influence of dance music, but it was a lot darker. There's usually pretty heavy sub bass, and there's a lot of music influence from dub, which I'll get to in a little bit. Most dubstep tracks are around 140 BPM. It also takes a lot of influence from two-step and other British electronic music genres. There's usually a lot of jittery rhythms as well. Artists like Burial are pretty well known for their UK garage sound, which I'll get to in a bit, but they also kind of cross over with dubstep. And then this dubstep sound would kind of enter the electronic dance music scene in the late 2000s and it would really be amplified. Producers would take the same kind of jittery, heavy bass rhythm, but make it more aggressive, loud, or overblown. So a lot of dubstep in the 2000s was pretty chill and laid back, but a lot of dubstep now is pretty loud and overblown to shit. There's still that same tempo and sound, but it's just amplified to the max with artists like Skrillex, and the dub sound kind of goes away. Post-hardcore is one of my favorite subgenres of punk music. It's basically taking the sound of hardcore punk in the early 80s and adding more to the formula. Bands like Fugazi would implement longer song structures as well as more intricate guitar playing than your normal hardcore punk band. Bands like Husker Du would start to experiment with more catchy songwriting and more pop elements. There were bands like Drive Like Jehu, which would again add elements of longer song structures, but would also add elements of noise rock and odd time signatures. Other bands would add elements of metal, some bands would add shoegaze later down the line, as well as indie rock and emo. It's basically just an evolution of hardcore punk but with more elements added in. Fugazi is probably one of my favorite bands ever. There are earlier bands too like Rex of Spring and Husker Du, as well as more emo tinged bands like Drive Like Jehu and At The Drive-In. I don't really know why thrash metal is so low. I mean, one of the most popular bands ever, Metallica, is under thrash metal. Thrash metal usually focuses more on a rhythmic quality more than melodic. It became very popular in the early to late 80s. Guitars would be played very fast and speeds were amped up. There were usually lots of the rhythmic guitar solos. Lyrics usually deal with the Cold War, which was going on at the time in the 80s, as well as violent themes or political messages. Bands like Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax are pretty well known for thrash metal. Jangle Pop was pretty popular in the 80s and 90s and takes elements of pop rock and post-punk and combines it with a jangly guitar sound. That being when an understory guitars are strummed with arpeggios while repeating notes over a chord. Jangle Pop essential bands would be The Smiths or R.E.M. Progressive metal is taking progressive rock, but making it darker and heavier, just fitting it more with a metal sound. I don't really know why this is before progressive rock. you think you'd put that first just so you could explain it. Progressive metal songs tend to be a bit lengthy. Other instruments are usually added into the mix. Time signatures can be pretty odd or can be changed frequently. Vocals are pretty similar to a lot of progressive rock stuff, but tend to be a little bit grittier. Some progressive metal vocals tend to be growly, but a lot of them also are very clean. I'm not really the hugest fan of progressive metal, I find some of it to be a little cringy personally. Really clean metal, including clean vocals, is kind of a big turnoff for me. And playing seems to be robotic a lot of the time. It seems like a lot of the time the songwriting is just meant to emphasize how technical they can play instead of actually emphasizing the songwriting. But there are still great bands like Tool and Porcupine Tree. I'm not crazy about bands like Opeth or Dream Theater, but they are there and they have a lot of fans, so you might enjoy them. Power metal is another metal genre I really can't get into. A lot of it seems even more clean than what I was just talking about. There's usually a lot of symphonic instrumentation, as well as classical instrumentation, but combined with super speedy riffs. It's not really as gritty as thrash, and there is a lot more of a melodic element. Guitars are usually super clean, and so are the vocals, which I cannot really stand. The most well-known bands in this genre are probably Halloween, Blind Guardian, and Gamma Ray. It's just not really metal music for me. UK bass is a pretty loose term, there's not really any clear definition, but it seems like kind of a big meshing pot of club music around the 2010s. There's a lot of elements of dubstep, house, garage, dance pop, R&B, hip hop, techno, etc. A lot of UK bass can have very heavy bass like the title implies, 
I like to think UK bass is just contemporary electronic music of the 2010s. You have artists like James Blake, Jamie XX, Disclosure. Then you have more aggressive stuff like Sophie and Machine Girl. J-pop is pop music from Japan. The differences between J-pop and K-pop is that J-pop has a more similar approach to a lot of synth pop, electro pop, and dance pop from America and Europe. There's also a lot of pop rock and just rock elements added. There's even some jazz pop stuff in there. I think one of the more well-known artists is Kiryu Kiryu Pamu. There's also AKB48, and I've never really heard of them. I'm not sure who they are, but they've sold over 50 million records, so I gotta give them props. Film scores is just music used in films. Maybe you could count TV shows as well. This can literally be anything like I was talking about in video game OSTs. Here are a few recommendations. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. The one and only. Electro Industrial is a combination of dance music and techno, as well as some house stuff, as well as this thing called electronic body music, which I'll get to in a second. It takes this kind of club dance sound and combines it with the sound of industrial music. Because of this, Electro Industrial is a little bit more stripped down than your usual dance music. The industrial influences aren't as heavy necessarily when you take something like industrial metal. It's a little bit more subtle, but you still hear the influences generally. There are albums like Human After All by Daft Punk, which do definitely have a bit of an industrial element to it. There's also artists like Against All Logic, as well as some weirder ones out there like Frontline Assembly, as well as Skinny Puppy. Horrorcore is the combination of rap music with horror and scary elements, even suicidal stuff too, or just generally depressing lyrics. It also tends to be very violent as well. Grave Diggers is a very influential early group of horrorcore, and RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan is also in it, so that's pretty cool. 3-6 Mafia is another early group that is very influential, especially to the whole Memphis underground scene. Horrorcore can also tie a lot with Southern hip-hop and Memphis hip-hop. Downtempo is a pretty chill out version of electronic music, more specifically things like Techno House and IDM. Downtempo is still more energetic and beat driven than ambient, so it's a nice middle ground between normal electronic music and ambient. Trip hop is a subgenre of downtempo, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Downtempo artists include Boards of Canada, Portishead, and Bonobo. EBM stands for Electronic Body Music. This is what I was talking about earlier with Electro Industrial. It's very similar to that, but it's more synth driven, and it's really not techno inspired. A lot of EBM comes before techno started popping off. It's pretty much just a more dance driven side of industrial music with pretty clean vocals, which was different from a lot of industrial stuff, and somewhat dance friendly sound. Art rock is rock music that is artsy. Wow, I know. I don't know, it's basically rock music that is cutting edge and creative and experimental, but that can depend on what you think. I guess I can define art rock as trying to break the limits of what rock music is. Radiohead is a pretty prime example, I know it's cliche, but they are one of the best rock bands. In Rainbows is my personal favorite, although Kid A and OK Computer are not far behind. Bands like The Velvet Underground and David Bowie were also pretty cutting edge too, as well as The Beatles. Neo Psychedelia is another genre with a lot of personal favorite albums of mine. Basically an evolution of psychedelic pop and rock expanding around the 80s and 90s, continuing to today. Neo Psychedelia kind of covers both pop and rock. It's tied to a lot of alternative rock in the 90s with generally clean instrumentation, just with a lot of effects and reverb, mainly bands like The Flaming Lips and Spiritualized. Some dance music and electronic music started getting added into the mix as well. As well as some lo-fi stuff and folk music in the 2000s. There's later bands like Fishman's, Ween, Stereolab, and Animal Collective, which is probably in contention for one of my favorite bands ever. Strawberry Jam is probably my favorite album of all time, and would later inspire the likes of MGMT and Tame Impala. Even some rap albums this decade have been inspired by Neo Psychedelia, like Flower Boy by Tyler the Creator and Kids See Ghosts by Kanye West and Kid Cudi. Death metal, which I notice is kind of confused with heavy metal, or people just call all metal heavy metal or death metal. 
You would hear in the 90s, a lot of the media would just call all metal death metal and how it would make your kids satanic and want to kill everybody. Is death metal music just hype or something that could actually hurt your kids? But anyways, death metal keeps the speed and aggression of thrash metal, but more down tune and menacing guitars. Vocals are ground and are really despondent and disturbing. There's often a lot of time signature changes and it's really more technical. There are great bands like Morbid Angel, Carcass, and of course, Death. Dark Cabaret is a form of cabaret music, which just means music, dance, or a performance performed in a theater. So Dark Cabaret kind of takes that idea and makes it darker. So this music is very grand and theatrical. It uses orchestration like violins, pianos, horns, and synths too. There are artists like Tom Waits and Nick Cave that are very theatrical and great examples of the style. Political hip hop is, well, exactly how it's described. It is slightly different from conscious hip hop, since conscious is kind of focusing on social issues as a whole, while political hip hop is directly focused on politics. Which I mean, most conscious rappers are also political rappers. Pretty much the same people I listed on conscious hip hop also apply here. Power Pop takes the idea of pop rock in the 70s and just kind of makes it louder. Most Power Pop groups predominantly use power chords, which is what the name comes from. It's just a chord that uses a root note and a fifth note. Big Star and El Costello are pretty big names for Power Pop. It kind of died down towards the 80s and became somewhat underground, but came back into popularity with a new alternative rock sound, mainly because of Weezer, who still kept that same power chord sound. There's also more modern stuff like Car Seat Headrest and Jeff Rosenstock. Bebop is a subgenre of jazz and you can kind of credit it as really starting the creativity of jazz music to come. It took the ideas of swing and early jazz music and really started to incorporate more complicated melodies, faster tempos, chord progressions, key changes, and improvisation. While most early jazz music was meant for dancing or a fun environment, bebop was more similar to a home and closed listening experience. There are artists like Felonis Monk, Dizzy Gillespie, Max Roach, and of course, Miles Davis. Industrial rock is pretty similar to industrial metal, but obviously it's not as heavy as metal, but it still uses the same amount of distortion and dissonance, just with more of a rock feel. Examples are Nine Inch Nails, Swans, and Killing Joke. Bip-hop takes the style of chiptune and 8 or 16-bit synths combined with pop music, with some additional elements like guitars. Pretty simple, a lot of video game soundtracks have this sound emulating a retro feel. Examples are Kiro Kiro Benito and Crystal Castles. Psychedelic pop was similar to psychedelic rock in the 60s and almost was a combination of pop rock and folk music, but added with the same psychedelic ideas that made psychedelic rock what it is. Beach Boys and the Beatles have a pretty psychedelic flair, as well as Animal Collective. Space ambient is ambient music that is meant to replicate space. It has a very out of this world or galactic feel and uses techniques like drone and ascension and descension of sound. Most of this stuff is actually soundtracks for science fiction or space related media. You have things like Apollo by Brian Eno, Oxygen by Gene Michael Gerard, and I gotta shout out the Super Mario Galaxy soundtrack. Progressive rock is exactly the same with progressive metal, although I'd consider progressive rock more popular. But anyways, progressive rock started in the mid-60s, combining rock with jazz, classical music, folk, improvisation, and odd time signatures. Very long song structures are added. It kind of somewhat fits in with a lot of elements of art rock as well. Good examples are Pink Floyd, King Crimson, Yes, as well as Jet Real Toll. Jazz rap is jazz production with hip-hop flows and lyrics. Most of these comprise of samples coming from older jazz songs and loops with hip-hop drums. But there is a lot of jazz rap that actually uses live instrumentation, like The Roots, Diggable Planets, and Ketrick Lamar. A lot of jazz rap is pretty laid back instrumentally and lyrically, but a lot of it can also be conscious and political. Other good examples are a Tribe Called Quest, MF Doom, Nas, and Mom Deep. Hardcore punk is a deviation of punk rock from the 70s while stripping down production and fidelity for a pretty pure raw sound. Most songs are pretty short, usually being less than 2 minutes, with aggressive playing and vocals yelling or even screaming. Some punk bands did take more of a conventional approach with vocals, a majority of hardcore punk is also pretty political. Great bands are Black Flag, Minor Threat, Bad Brains, and Dead Kennedys. 
Dark ambient is an offshoot of ambient music that still keeps the same concept, only darker. It tends to be creepier, with more unsettling soundscapes. Occasionally, percussion can be added, which actually kind of makes it sound creepier in some instances. Some dark ambient also adds elements of industrial and post-industrial. There's albums like Selected Ambient Works Volume 2 by Aphex Twin, Soundtracks for the Blind, and Everywhere at the End of Time. Black metal is a very raw and lo-fi form of metal started in Norway and Switzerland. It's super noisy and raw with not very complex guitar tones, just surrounded by noise. Vocals are often very harsh and often are just barely even attached to the instrumentation. Later down the line, black metal would become more high fidelity and add elements of classical music creating symphonic black metal. Later black metal musicians started experimenting with ambient and folk music. Some black metal became a lot more clean with vocals becoming more melodic, which would turn into melodic black metal. Black metal and its other styles would later be adopted by American bands, and there's even a thing called black gaze, which is black metal and shoe gaze. So yeah, that pretty much sums up a basic idea of what black metal is. Despite all this, I still haven't totally gotten into black metal entirely yet. Out of any entry point, I would probably recommend Over. More specifically, this album, which I'm not even going to try to pronunciate. It's probably one of the easier albums to get into black metal, and it has some really nice elements of folk music. I also enjoy Death Spell Omega, although they are definitely not a great band to start out with. But in terms of more classic essential bands, you have people like Burzum and Mayhem. I'd also like to point out that I do not condone anything that a lot of these early Norwegian black metal bands did. I can't really describe much because this video might get taken down, but Jesus, some of these early bands did a lot of really messed up shit. A lot of them were also really racist, and some were Nazis, so yeah. But for the most part, big American black metal bands aren't really controversial, or at least not as controversial as Norwegian black metal bands. Okay, on a lighter note, we have Electropop, which takes styles from electronic and dance music, but adds pop structures. Are you noticing a pattern here? Pretty much every pop, rock, rap, metal genre is just like this. Throw some shit to another shit and bam. Not to discredit anything, because all of these genres on this list have great music attached to them. You could kinda qualify synth pop as Electropop, although synth pop was more so following the standard of 80s production, while Electropop follows a variety of things. There's early stuff like Yellow Magic Orchestra, which is combining synth pop with more electronic dance elements, to later 90s artists like Britney Spears and Madonna, to stuff in the 2000s like Gorillaz, MGMT, even Kanye West. There's also now artists like Charlie XCX and 100 Gex, as well as Kiro Kiro Benito. Glam rock started in the UK in the 1970s and takes elements from pop, rock, blues, and psychedelic rock, with a very theatrical element. Most artists had a pretty big stage presence with wild outfits. David Bowie is obviously a pretty influential figure, as well as T-Rex and early Brian Eno. Stoner metal is very slow and heavy, with chugging groovy riffs and heavy use of bass, as well as being very psychedelic, which is where the stoner element comes in. A lot of these bands were greatly inspired by psychedelics and also marijuana. Early bands like Caius and Sleep influenced the genre greatly. There are later artists like Electric Wizard and my favorite metal band Boris. A lot of stoner metal can tie in with doom metal and sludge metal. Breakcore comes from drum and bass and drill and bass. Drum and bass being a popular form of electronic music with fast tempos, usually off the blueprint of the Amen Break, which is one of the most used samples in music. Breakcore takes elements of drum and bass, but makes it noisier and more aggressive. Some breakcore is combined with conventional dance music and frequent sampling, while later it get combined with stuff like drone bass, even classical music in some cases. There's even some metal in there as well. Most breakcore now is still kind of a throwback to the 90s sound, and there's still a lot of subgenres based off of breakcore. There's artists like Square Pusher, also Venetian Snares that uses that kind of classical element, as well as Machine Girl. Neofolk comes from post-industrial, which I haven't really explained yet, but it takes industrial and kind of removes the noisy elements of it, while still having that dark, mechanical, foreboding atmosphere. 
So anyways, Neofolk takes folk music and makes it way darker and atmospheric. A lot of it sounds almost kind of apocalyptic. Traditional European or classical music is sometimes used as well. There's also elements of ambient as well as just experimental music. In the 90s, you have bands like Swans and Current 93. Current 93 always reminded me of like Elder Scroll game or just some general fantasy game or a point and click game of the 90s. Just playing on your old PC. They also have this EP called I Have a Special Plan for This World, and this may be one of the scariest things I've ever listened to. I've never gotten through it all the way, and it's only 22 minutes. Avant-garde metal is metal music that's just fucking weird as balls. Avant-garde doesn't stick to one sound or idea, it's just any metal music that is avant-garde, either by the vocals or playing, or most of the time even both. System of a Down is a primary example of having eccentric vocals, as well as just really odd songwriting. But hey, they are one of the best selling metal bands ever, which goes to show that popular music often pushes boundaries and can be experimental. There's also bands like Primus that adds elements of funk and some of the oddest bass grooves of any band, as well as death metal bands like Gorguts, with some of the craziest playing in any band, and the vocalist half the time sounds like a headcrab zombie from Half-Life 2. There's other bands too, like Mr. Bungle, which words cannot describe what their music sounds like. You kind of just have to listen to it. Abstract hip hop is pretty similar to what I was just talking about earlier with avant garde metal. It can have odd instrumentals or grooves. Another year like a basketball. Abstract flows, as well as lyrics, which are often very symbolic or metaphorical, even added with absurdist humor. You have rappers like MF Doom, who rapped in the perspective of supervillain. Among other topics, his music would get conscious and political occasionally. He would also rap his other alter egos, like Victor Vaughn, a younger scientist from another dimension. He also raps as King Ghidorah, who is a giant three-headed monster from the Godzilla universe. But in terms of other abstract hip-hop, there's artists like Shabazz palaces who are super underrated in my opinion and should be talked about more. Their beats are super out there stylistically and are super creative. There's also albums like Atrocity Exhibition by Danny Brown which has some of the craziest and most unsettling songs I've ever heard on a rap album. Dark Wave is like synth pop and New Wave's edgy sibling. I don't really understand why something being darker or more atmospheric makes it a new genre. It just gets so specific that it doesn't even matter anymore. But think of Dark Wave as the darker elements of post-punk, combined with electronic and synths of synth pop. It's kind of similar to gothic rock too. There's bands like Cockatoo Twins, Dead Can Dance, and Coil. Protopunk is very low on this list for some reason. Some of the most popular bands of the 60s and 70s classify as protopunk. It basically just means rock music that would eventually shape the punk rock scene of the 70s from the UK, later moving in the US in the form of hardcore punk. So it's really just more of a time thing than an actual genre. The Stooges are a prime example of protopunk, as well as Patti Smith, The Velvet Underground, and The Sonics. Harsh Noise. <laughs> is a bit of a meme. It's not really music in the conventional sense at all. It uses noises and electronics or any sound meant to make your ears bleed. It's not really something I'm into nor something that a lot of people are into, but there's a lot to appreciate about noise music. Like all music, it is art and it can be appreciated in certain contexts. Noise music is also incorporated into a lot of things like rock, industrial, even pop and rap and electronic music. Pole Steven by Mersbau is an album I'm not really a huge fan of, but it's almost essential only really for the first song, just to see what your first reaction is. He has a far more accessible album called Mersbeat, but it still uses a ton of noises, but there is some recognizable instrumentation, unlike Pole Steven. Drone metal combines metal music with drone music, which I haven't really explained yet, but it's kind of similar to ambient and noise music, but it's super elongated, with notes being played out for as long as possible. So drone metal takes this idea, but with a more metal sound. Drones are made from heavy electric guitars as well as bass. Drums are sometimes present, but not always, and when they are, they're much more sparse than normal metal music. A lot of distortion and psychedelic effects are also added. Earth 2 by Earth is a pretty textbook drone metal album, but maybe if you want to get more into drone metal, Flood by Boris is an easier album to get into. It combines elements of drone metal with post-rock and psychedelic rock, as well as ambient. Post bop is this kind of weird transition from bebop, which I was talking about earlier. It's basically a continuation of bebop ideas, but getting a bit more out there. Some ideas getting a bit more avant-garde, but not to the point where it's too experimental or extreme. 
It's basically a middle ground between bebop and avant-garde jazz that would later come in the late 60s and 70s. I just want to say, when it comes to most jazz subgenres, I don't really use these terms in the same way with something like alternative rock or west coast hip-hop. Jazz subgenres are much more specific, and they're very dependent on the times that music came out. John Coltrane's A Love Supreme is post-bop, I guess, and it's not really experimental or weird in any way, it's a really great record to get into jazz music in general. Future Garage, despite the name, does not come from garage rock. It actually comes from UK Garage, Two Step, and Dubstep that I was talking about earlier. And I'm gonna be real, this has been one of the hardest genres for me to define yet. It's really similar to a lot of Dubstep and Garage. I guess it's more chilled out and calm than Garage, but not by much. I don't really know how to explain the meaning between Garage and Future Garage. I guess it really doesn't matter that much. If you want a great example, Burials Untrue is very good. I recommend that album. Gothic rock is pretty similar to a lot of dark post-punk, so there's a lot of crossover in between, basically just taking post-punk and making it darker. There are bands like The Cure and of course Joy Division. Art punk is taking the ideas of art rock and meshing them with a more raw and stripped back punk rock sound. This can mean various things like longer song structures, combining elements of jazz or funk, even afrobeat which was more prominent with bands like Talking Heads, especially Fear of Music and Remain in Light. But generally, the same idea of art rock pushing boundaries and thinking outside the box is pretty much what art punk is. RK Moon by Television is a great way to get into this stuff. Also Talking Heads as well, one of my favorite bands. Memphis rap started coming out in Memphis, Tennessee starting in the early 90s. Now, this is something I noticed from a lot of music genres, is that if you aren't making music specifically in the areas where the genre started, you were kind of counted out. For example, hardcore punk was more prominent in Washington DC, the West Coast, and New York, so making punk in other places was pretty difficult and you couldn't really get your music out. The same thing goes for hip-hop. If you weren't from the East or West Coast, you weren't really respected. When Outkast won Best New Rap Group at the 1995 Source Awards, they were booed after saying the South got something to say because Southern hip hop was pretty much ridiculed at the time. You know what I'm saying? It's like we got a demo tape and nobody want to hear, but it's like this the South got something to say. That's all I got to say. Memphis rap is kind of the rise of popularity of Southern hip hop music. It was a lot more grimy, lo fi, and bleak. Unlike most rap at the time to be built on samples, drum machines were used a lot more. Sampling was still used, of course, mainly from funk and soul, instead of jazz that a lot of East Coast hip-hop is sampling. 3-6 Mafia is probably one of the biggest innovators when it comes to Memphis rap, as well as Project Pat and Tommy Wright. The third later influencing artists outside of Tennessee, like Lil Ugly Maid, Denzel Curry, and Suicide Boys. Cybeant comes from a lot of psychedelic electronic music of the 90s. Combine it with a much slower and calmer sound of ambient. And while I'm at it, I should probably explain what trance is because it's not on this iceberg, and it's pretty pivotal to the whole Cybian movement. Trance is a form of electronic music that kind of stimulates the same ideas that some ambient does, of calming and relaxing the mind, hence the name. But unlike ambient, trance music uses drum beats and songs are not strung out, but kind of usually layered for a cool psychedelic effect. There's also a thing called Psy Trance, which is just trance but more psychedelic. So basically, Psybeant takes elements of Psy Trance and psychedelic music and combines it with ambient. There are albums like Life Forms by The Future Sound of London, which is a great example, as well as the artist Spongle, which I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Shibuya K comes from the shopping district Shibuya in Tokyo, and Shibuya K means Shibuya style, which is referencing the pretty eclectic fashion and music scene in that area. Around the 80s, a lot of record stores were importing music from all around the world, including Europe and America. So Shibuya K took the style of J-pop and combined it with more Western ideas, like jangle and indie pop, as well as alternative rock and neo-psychedelia. Shibuya K is basically just this big mashup of all these popular American and European genres, so it's pretty unspecific. You have artists like Cornelius, who have influences in psychedelic rock, Indytronica, and Shoegaze. Along with a lot of electronic music, you also had groups like Fishmans, who had a lot of neo-psychedelia and dub influences. Sludge Metal is the combination of a lot of heavy, groovy, and speedy elements of punk music with the very dark, foreboding, and slow qualities of doom metal. Doom metal meaning metal music that is much more slow, atmospheric, and dark. Much like the name doom metal, it is very depressing and downtrodden, 
So Sludge Mono takes these very opposite genres and combines them to make an aggressive but heavy and dingy quality. Basically what sludge is supposed to mean. This started when a lot of hardcore punk bands started experimenting and getting heavier and slower with their sound, while still keeping the punk element, like Black Flag on My War. Later bands established the genre like Melvin's and Mastodon. Garage Rock is really low for some reason. Some of the most popular bands of the 60s and 2000s come from Garage Rock. It's a pretty raw and energetic version of rock, using distorted guitars as well as more aggressive vocals at the time. It's called Garage Rock because the boom of rock music in the late 50s and early 60s caused a lot of young bands to want to create rock music usually in their garage, like the Stooges and Velvet Underground. I talked about these bands in protopunk as well, that's because they are very similar in style. Also, Garage Rock would have a revival in the 2000s with bands like The White Stripes and The Strokes. No Wave is not a clear genre, it's more of an art form or anti-art form depending on how you want to define it. No Wave comes from New York in the late 70s, and let me tell you, boy was downtown New York a shit show to live in. So in the 70s, all these groups retaliated by throwing the rock and pop subgenres in the trash and create a lot of experimental avant-garde rock and punk music, including noisy dissonance, elements of jazz and funk, and other experimental forms of music. Art and fashion were also pretty pivotal to the No Wave scene, a lot of bands created art and videos in contribution to their music, check out bands like DNA, Suicide, Swans, and James Chance and the Contortions. Atmospheric black metal is black metal, but atmospheric? Crazy, I know. It's kind of removing a lot of the noise elements. It becomes a lot more ethereal and even adds elements of ambient as well as folk music. Guitars are still pretty loud, but through all of the effects, it's more so creating a wall of sound rather than really noisy riffs. There are groups like Paysage de Hivar, I'm definitely not pronouncing that right, Over and Burzum, just so you know, that guy is also kind of an asshole. Deconstructed Club takes a lot of electronic styles like electronic dance music, house, trap, electropop, even reggae, basically a shit ton of ideas and adding post-industrial to them, just generally making it experimental and odd. Maybe a bit of precursor to a lot of hyperpop too in a way. I also noticed that a lot of Deconstructed Club has very similar visual styles too, a lot of time using 3D animation, often kind of grotesque or weird. Look at the music video for Face Shopping by Sophie, rest in peace and also a lot of album covers for these albums. Trip Hop is a style of electronic music that is kind of similar in ways to Down Tempo, although while Down Tempo is just meant to produce a sort of laid back vibe, Trip Hop, like the name implies, is a lot more trippy and the instrumentals are a lot more intricate. Some Trip Hop can be darker or foreboding, not as laid back as Down Tempo, but still having a pretty subdued energy. Some Trip Hop is instrumental, but there were a lot of singers and rappers who adopted the production, like Bjork, mostly on post, Portishead, Massive Attack, and my personal favorite being DJ Shadow. Synthpunk takes the sound of punk but adds synths as well as drum machines sometimes too, and generally just a more electronic sound rather than just standard guitars, drums, and bass. Now I noticed that a bit of synthpunk has a pretty upbeat or even quirky vibe like Devo, but a lot of synthpunk can sound kind of despondent or somewhat dark like Suicide and Crystal Castles. Even some later Nine Inch Nails stuff has a synthpunk vibe. A lot of the darker synth punk can cross with no wave, and a lot of the happier stuff can cross with dance punk, which is just punk music with a pretty poppy sound that is easy to dance to, like LCD sound system, or even some Gang of Four stuff. Melodic death metal, of course, is a style of death metal, which still keeps the down-tuned, heavy distortion and harsh aggressive sound, but combines it with a more melodic sound, kind of similar to heavy metal. There's usually a lot more melodic guitar riffs and solos. There occasionally is clean vocals as well. It's just a more calm version of death metal, but still keeping the general sound and aggression. <laughs> 
Progressive Electronic is some pretty interesting stuff. It combines a lot of the ideas and concepts of progressive rock, but applying it to electronic music, mainly synthesizers, since this started around the 70s. So these songs were a lot longer. They would change and add instrumentation throughout the song, but for the most part, these songs were mainly instrumental and dealing with synths and other electronics instead of normal rock instrumentation. Early artists are Jean-Michael Girard and Kraftwerk, as well as Ryuchi Sakamoto. There are also other newer artists like Daniel Lapatin, better known as 10 Tricks Point Never, with albums like R Plus 7. Marshall Industrial, this is a bit of a weird one, but it has influences from industrial and post-industrial, but adds some folk, classical, or just European-esque instrumentation. And here's the big one. Elements and samples of military marching, weapons of war, speeches, and nationalistic ideas, even fascism. It's pretty weird. Some of it's pretty questionable, but a lot of it seems like art and critiquing the ideas that they are sampling, but yeah. Glitch is what I talked about earlier with a lot of subgenres that took the idea of using glitchy techniques in music, but now it's pretty much the full focus of the music. So obviously a lot of this can be pretty difficult. A big one being The Caretaker, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of the album Everywhere at the End of Time. Another being something like Velocity Design Comfort by Sweet Trip, as well as something like Replica by 10 Tricks Point Never, which even adds elements of Vaporwave. Electroacoustic is a style using acoustic instruments like guitar or pianos and combining them with technology that just generally alters the sound, using processors, feedback, distortion, etc. It gives it more of an electronic effect. Minimalism is kind of a newer form of classical music, which uses very short phrases or a short series of notes, and has all of these musicians and various instruments kind of play these really short phrases, and it comes together and it kind of sounds psychedelic, so it's very repetitive at first, but most minimalism is very progressive, and is constantly changing and adding in instruments, and it's pretty unique. Steve Reich and Philip Glass are the two biggest composers of the genre. Listen to music for 18 musicians or electric counterpoint. Lowercase is very similar in ways to ambient music, but lowercase largely uses very quiet sounds to the human ear, or sounds we don't really pay attention to in everyday life, and amplifies and samples them in various ways, for a very ambient soundscape. Kind of like the album Forms of Paper, which literally takes the sound of paper shuffling and moving around, and changes it into this very ambient soundscape. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't really listened to the full thing yet, because 54 minutes of this kind of makes me feel like I'm going insane. Tetsu Inoue makes much more accessible music in my opinion. It has a lot more elements of ambient. Listen to Health Loop for a good example of what this genre is. Fun fact about Tetsu is that he kind of just dipped one day and no one really knows where he is or if he's still alive or not. So I hope he's doing well or he's okay. Deep House is a form of house music that is more chilled and subdued, and a bit of a slower tempo than more typical house music. A lot of Deep House samples are pretty smooth vocals from soul and funk. Newer Deep House doesn't always keep the soul and funk influences, but it does keep the more chilled out and laid back feel of Deep House. Noise rock is rock music that uses noise. Who would have thought? So, a lot of feedback and distortion is used. A lot of it started out in that kind of proto-punk garage rock and punk rock sound, where bands were turning up the volume and distortion, like the Velvet Underground and the Stooges. Later bands like Big Black and even later Nirvana stuff like In Utero increased the aggression and sound. There's also other noise rock bands like Black Midi, as well as Sonic Youth. Tribal ambient is taking ambient and combining it with a lot of traditional music and art from around the world. Most of it taking influence from Africa, Europe, or Asia, with various instruments from each region. This is combined for a psychedelic sound and is often either very soothing or kinda eerie. Vocals and chants are used a lot, but kinda spaced out and used sparingly. The Donkey Kong soundtrack is a really nice example of tribal ambient, while something like the Akira soundtrack shows how it can be used in a more eerie way. Post metal is post rock but replaces the rock with metal, so it's more heavy and extreme but keeps the build up, atmosphere, and sonic textures. A lot of post metal takes influence from black metal, progressive metal, and sludge metal, as well as drone metal bands like Isis, Boris, Tools, and Neurosis are good starting points. <laughs> 
Electro Clash is kind of a revival of a lot of synth based music in the 80s, like synth pop, disco, electro, and new wave, but with a more modern EDM and techno sound. There's also kind of an added element of trashiness or just trying to be a little edgy. There are groups like Crystal Castles, MIA, La Tigre, even some Daft Punk stuff like Human After All. Tape music is a term I'm a little stumped on what exactly it means. I guess tape music is somewhat the birth of electronic music. The magnetic tape was invented in 1928 and we begin the boom of radio and broadcasting. It allowed for musicians and broadcasters to mix, edit, and cut in various ways. I would say that tape music is kind of just a term to describe the advancement in music technology, especially in experimental music, and tape music would lead to stuff like sound collage and electroacoustic. Krautrock started in Germany around the late 60s and was a musical and cultural art form that took influence from a lot of psychedelic and experimental rock, even some ambient music too, and was created as a cultural movement after World War II, kind of to establish this new idea of German culture, as after World War II, Germany was kind of outcasted as the country that supported Hitler, even though many Germans were persecuted by Hitler. So because of that, a lot of German musicians wanted to create a new art form and idea, so Krautrock was created. Kind of ironic how how the term uses kraut, which is derogatory for Germans. There are great bands like New, Faust, and Can that would help establish the genre. Math rock takes rock instrumentation while also adding odd time signatures, polyrhythms, which is two or more rhythms being played at once, as well as a very complex and technical sound, while taking a lot of influence from the more technical side of progressive rock and jazz rock. While early bands like Drive Like Jehu and Slint took the ideas of post-hardcore and noise rock and made them more technical, bands towards the late 90s would combine the technical sound with more emo and post-rock music like American Football and Cap and Jazz. There's also other great bands like Black Midi, Battles, and Tricot. And of course I have to shout out Hella, which the drummer Zach Hill would later form Death Grips. Dungeon Synth is a style of ambient and even some orchestral music that is largely used for soundtracks, mainly those that deal with fantasy of some kind. It's very cinematic and sounds like the music you would hear spelunking in a 90s RPG game. There's some crossover with black metal like Burzum, there's a lot of RPG games from the 90s, as well as a lot of anime, particularly fantasy like Berserk. Drill and bass is pretty similar to breakcore and they both kind of take from drum and bass and amplify it, except drill and bass takes more sounds from IDM with fast tempos of drum and bass and amplifies the drum into this crazy ass hectic sound. The two big artists of this sound are Aphex Twin and Square Pusher. It's basically the musical equivalent to ADHD and it's some of the most insane electronic music I've ever heard. Power Electronics is one of the most disturbing genres on this list. It takes sounds of industrial and noise music and amplifies the loudness with more of an advancement in technology towards the 80s. It even uses more industrial samples like tools and metals. Best of all, there's screamed vocals and that's with the noise and everything. Lyrics are usually about really disturbing and violent stuff, often meant as shock value. There are bands like Ramla and White House. On a bit of a lighter note, we have folk punk, which takes sounds of punk rock and hardcore punk, but strips it down to an acoustic and folk approach. It started mainly in Europe as punk widely became more popular, but bands wanted to integrate the angst into a more traditional European folk sound. However, in the US you had bands like Violent Femmes, which are super influential not only for folk punk, but for a lot of alternative rock and indie rock that would come in the 90s. I mean, their self-titled album came out in 1983, and the first song on the album would later become a hit in the 90s, 10 years after. There are also other bands like Against Me and Andrew Jackson Jihad. Okay, so dub is going to be kind of similar to my explanation of tape music as it's less of a super concrete sound and more of an advancement in music technology. Dub's origins take place in the 70s when a lot of reggae music was being compiled and remixed by DJs like King Tubby and Lee Scratch Perry with extensive use of reverb and sound effects as well as dubbing instrumentals or vocals over other records. So this is one of the first instances of DJs really remixing songs and records and would lead to the way remixes are used in music, as well as influencing a lot of electronic music like Ambient and Jungle. Screamo is the combination of emo music with a much more aggressive vibe, almost like hardcore punk, but vocals are screamed. Get it? Emo? Scream? 
Screamo. A lot of post-hardcore towards the 2000s would begin to have a Screamo sound. Screamo can kind of be categorized to have a more poppy emo-like sound. But then you have Screamo that is like batshit crazy, like Orchid, which is like very intense even for me. But I can definitely see the appeal. There are also newer bands too, like Law Dispute, Touche Amour, and even some Death Heaven stuff, which I really recommend. Ritual Ambient is pretty similar to some of the darker stuff of Tribal Ambient. Ritual Ambient, like the name implies, is very dark and simulates the atmosphere of the occult and rituals, including chantings and rhythms, similar to those in Tribal Ambient. A lot of the darker moments in Zelda soundtracks kind of have this feel, especially in Majora's Mask. Horror Synth is pretty much just taking what I said about Dungeon Synth and applying it to horror. So you have a much scarier electronic sound. With the advancements of synths and other equipment, a lot of film composers started using this technology to produce soundtracks for horror movies, mainly people like John Carpenter for films like Halloween and The Thing. Berlin School originated in Berlin during the early 70s and is very stylistically similar to Ambient. It's kind of difficult to differentiate, but Berlin School uses more Mellotron, which is an early synthesizer and short repeating notes. But other than that, Ambient and Berlin School are very similar. Tangerine Dream is well known for establishing the genre. Happy Hardcore is an offshoot of Hardcore EDM music, which is more energetic with faster tempos, and Happy Hardcore takes the same speed and energy, but is a lot more upbeat and happy with major piano chords, usually pitched up vocals, and generally a pretty fun sound. It's almost kind of like a precursor to Nightcore in a lot of ways, so if you want to feel good but still rave, then this is the genre for you. Microsound is a type of electronic music that uses sounds of an incredibly small scale, something that you wouldn't be able to produce with a normal instrument because these sounds last only like 10 milliseconds or less. But when all these sounds are combined, it creates this complex series of notes, like a normal instrument, but you just have this incredibly subtle, odd compositions. So it's very similar to lowercase, except lowercase is meant to amplify real world things that we never pay attention to, while Microsound is creating a new sound and isn't usually sample based. High Energy was a form of dance music coming off the heels of synth pop and electro disco, which is just disco with more of a club and electronic feel, with more of an energetic dance feel with sometimes pitched vocals. High Energy was pretty huge in many LGBT clubs, mainly San Francisco and New York, and the name comes from the Donna Summer song, I Feel Love. In an interview, she described the song as having a high energy vibe, which is where the name comes from. Grindcore comes from hardcore punk and crust punk, which is just a more nasty form of punk with more of a thrash metal and speed metal influence. Grindcore takes these styles and makes it even more nasty and gross with even some death metal influence with extremely fast tempos and playing, as well as having some of the most unintelligible screaming and growling vocals. Another defining feature of Grindcore is that songs and albums are extremely short. Like there are some songs on Napalm Death Scum that last less than 10 seconds. There's also other bands like Pig Destroyer and Discordant Access. Noise pop is pretty much just taking what I said about noise rock, but applying it to more of a pop sound. Now, a lot of noise pop does come from a lot of alternative rock from the 80s that got a bit noisier, but unlike noise rock, these bands were a lot catchier with popular melodies and songwriting. The more noisier side of shoegaze, like My Bloody Valentine, often fits into noise pop, as well as indie rock bands like Pixies and Pavement. Now, there are a lot more bands that are almost entirely pop based that still have that noise pop element. Psychedelic folk is trying to accomplish what a lot of psychedelic music is trying to emulate, but with a folk sound. This started in the 60s when a lot of psychedelic rock was hitting the mainstream. A lot of folk artists would use a lot of world music influence, especially from many countries in Asia, as well as reverb with either instruments or vocals. You have early stuff like Love and Tim Buckley, and newer stuff like Midair Thief and the microphones. <laughs> 
Chopped and Screwed comes from DJ Screw, who was a Texas producer who established and popularized the sound. Chopped and Screwed takes Southern hip hop and chops it, which is to skip it or cut, and Screw, which is to slow down the tempo of the song. So you get this psychedelic mix. I know this is going to sound kind of cringy, but it is a bit of a precursor to Vaporwave. I know this has probably been said a million times. DJ Screw would lead to a huge influence in Southern hip hop, as well as hip hop and remixing music in general. There are also artists like 36 Mafia, UGK, and even Lil Wayne, which would later use the sound. Black ambient comes from black metal and ambient music, so you aren't getting the super loud instrumentals of black metal, but you still are getting that very dingy atmosphere with a slower pace. Black metal vocals and shrieks are still used occasionally, but a lot of it is also instrumental, and is often used as interludes on black metal albums or just straight up ambient albums. Tech House is a more minimal form of house music, with that kind of signature roughed up bass and grooves of techno. Tech House is a bit more minimal occasionally, a little darker, and has some occasional industrial elements. There are artists like John Hopkins, as well as Actress, who I think is pretty underrated. Roots Reggae is kind of weird because it has some of the most famous musicians ever, like Bob Marley. Roots Reggae is inherently very political and focuses on issues like social injustice and growing up in many impoverished and dangerous areas that many people growing up in Jamaica have to go through, as well as the history of Jamaica dealing with colonialism and slavery. Bob Marley is a pretty legendary figure in Reggae and Roots Reggae. There's also other groups like the Upsetters. Psychobilly is the combination of punk rock and rockabilly, which is just an earlier form of rock music from the 50s, combining rock, country, and blues. Now, Psychobilly strung up in the 80s and takes more of a rockabilly instrumental approach, while still keeping the punk ethos and politics in the lyrics. The music also tends to be a little tongue-in-cheek. There are bands like The Cramps as well as X. Brutal Prog takes ideas from progressive rock as well as avant prog, which is pretty self explanatory, and makes it odder, complex, and louder, even combining elements of no wave, noise rock, math rock, and jazz. A lot of math rock bands that are pretty progressive in their approach are usually labeled as Brutal Prog, like Hella as well as Lightning Bolt. There's also the new black MIDI album Cavalcade, which is great. Death and Roll combines the heaviness and aggression of death metal, but combines it with a more tangible song structure, like a rock song or heavy metal. It's usually a bit less technical than death metal, but still keeps the growled vocals. There are bands like Black Breath, as well as Dismember. Spiritual jazz is kind of interesting because jazz is mostly an instrumental genre, so a lot of artists do have themes and ideas, but they may not always be conveyed thoroughly to the listener. But spiritual jazz takes a lot of influence from religion or other spiritual movements and world music, even politics at the time. Since jazz was most popular around the Civil Rights Act, not all spiritual jazz is inherently religious. Some spiritual jazz albums do have vocals which will often be topics about religion or politics. John Coltrane was pretty influential for his musical and spiritual philosophy, and Karma by Thero Sanders is one of my favorite jazz records. The name Power Noise is a tad bit misleading. It's not nearly as brutal as something like Power Electronics. Nonetheless, it is still a very loud genre. It combines noise with EDM and dance music. So there is shades of post-industrial and EBM, but Power Noise is more similar to industrial techno, drill and bass, as well as breakcore. Mathcore is the combination of math rock and metalcore, so it gets pretty crazy. With the same aggression, but with more complex time signatures and playing, a lot of the time mathcore can come off as more aggressive than metalcore, at least in my opinion. People kind of like to point out that the big three mathcore bands like Dillinger Escape Plan, Converge, and Botch. Free Jazz is a form of avant-garde jazz music that utilizes a lot of elements of post-bop, but adds improvisation pretty heavily. There's not a ton for me to say about it as it's pretty self-explanatory, but at the same time I don't know that much about it. But wow, for being created around the late 50s, a lot of this stuff was pretty groundbreaking and forward-thinking. Ornette Coleman is probably one of the most well-known musicians in Free Jazz. Suicidal depressive black metal is exactly what the title implies. If black metal wasn't already depressing enough, you have this. Vocal topics are usually very dark and deal with a lot of really depressing stuff. 
Also dealing with, I guess, let's say self-harm. Instrumentally, it takes a lot from atmospheric black metal while also taking influences from ambient and trone metal. The music is very disturbing and has a pretty hellish and dreadful atmosphere. This is also displayed in most of the album covers for these bands. It's also interesting to point out that a lot of these bands are composed of one person, which I don't know. I mean, I hope these people are okay or get help. Outsider can be pretty broad, but in a general art term, outsider means any form of art that is made by someone who has little experience or is self-taught, as well as not conforming to more popular art movements. So this can apply to any musician that is considered outside the norm or odd in some way. Daniel Johnston is one of the most well-known outsider musicians whose childlike songs and creative tapes started a lot of what would later be lo-fi rock, as well as people like Wesley Lewis, who was a schizophrenic artist and musician most well-known for songs like Rock and Roll McDonald's. Rock and Roll McDonald's! Rock and Roll McDonald's! And Suck a Caribou's Ass. He was a very interesting and creative person who left the world too soon. There are also people like Tiny Tim, who you probably know from Living in the Sunlight and Tiptoes Through the Tulips. Also, may he rest in peace. There are also bands like The Shags, who famously created one of the most critically panned rock albums ever, Philosophy of the World. Ethereal Wave is kind of similar to Shoegaze and Gothic Rock, but to put it simply, Ethereal Wave uses effects, distinct vocals, and soundscapes to produce a very psychedelic and ethereal soundscape. Cockatoo Twins are most well known for their contributions. Digital Hardcore takes a lot of hardcore punk elements, but combines them with electronic music like breakcore and drum and bass. Like most punk music, lyrics are pretty political. There is some crossover to synthpunk as well. Atari Teenage Riot would help establish the genre. Soe Musandi, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, is such an oddly specific genre, but it translates to Finnish sound. It's a Finnish form of psychedelic trance music that adds elements of improvisation, comedy, sampling, drum and bass, funk music, and just a general odd atmosphere. Honestly, there's not much else to say about this one. There's not a ton of music being released in this genre, and there wasn't even really a ton of music released in its prime. Pico Pop is a style of Shibuya K that takes influence from more electronic music, kickstarted by Cornelius, and would lead to an overall more cutesy pop sound and style. Flashcore is one of the harder genres to describe on this list. It's a pretty out there form of electronic music that implements really unique and interesting sound design with really odd structures and textures. It takes a lot of influence from stuff like Speedcore, which is electronic music with a BPM of over 240. But Flashcore strays off from that so far that it's basically pretty unrecognizable. Zolo is more of a term relating to an era of a lot of art rock and post-punk of the 70s that had a really quirky and zany edge. The term was coined from the zany Zolo Music Hour show hosted by Terry Shiki to describe really hyper and jerky rhythms with electronics and synthesizers, as well as weird falsettos and a sense of humor. There are post-punk bands like Devo and XTC, as well as new wave and pop bands like Oingo Boingo and They Might Be Giants. Minimal Synth is a form of pop music that was pretty underground in the late 70s to mid 80s with a pretty DIY approach. It takes a lot of elements from synth pop and new wave with dark and moody vocals and instrumentals, as well as a pretty raw, simple sound, mainly just comprised of synths and a drum machine. Zuo means celestial in the fake language Kobayan, which was invented by Christian Vander, founder of the band Magma who basically invented Zool, and their discography probably takes around half the albums in this genre. Zool is a form of progressive rock and jazz rock. It's usually pretty epic and majestic in scale. Magma also had a pretty big sci-fi element throughout a lot of their albums. There's also elements of classical music and choirs. There are also other bands too, like Koi and Hijiki, which I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, which I believe are also trying to replicate the same language. I'm not entirely sure, but the lyrics aren't a real language or anything. 
Indeterminacy is just classical music, but there's always a chance of randomness in the composition or performance. One of the most famous musicians of this being John Cage. He's most famous for playing pieces like Music of Changes, as well as 433, which is literally just him sitting on a piano and playing nothing for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. A lot of this music is more about the philosophy on how music is created and what can be considered music, more so than the actual sound. Heavy Psych is a form of psychedelic rock that is more drawn out, heavy, and noisy with the same riffs and psychedelic atmosphere. Some of this can be traced to things like blues rock, heavy metal, and doom metal. There are bands like Caius, King Gizzard, and The Lizard Wizard, as well as Electric Wizard, which have established more of a modern popularity of the genre. But if you want to go really out there, you have bands like Les Reales, De Nudes, who, have, who were crazy ahead of their time in the 60s. European free jazz is like free jazz on crack. It doesn't really have to be European or anything. The genre kind of just started out there. It's pretty experimental. It doesn't really have conventional jazz techniques of any kind. Cowpunk combines country music with the raw sound of punk rock. Bands like the Meat Puppets are most well known for their cowpunk sound. This is pretty similar to what I was talking about with Psycho Billy, only more of a country twist. Serialism is really interesting. It's a form of classical music in which instruments are aligned based on their pitches and is composed by pitches, timbers, and dynamics. Arnold Schoenberg, who is a famous serialism composer, created the 12 tone technique, where all 12 notes are given the same importance and music avoids being in a key. Freak folk takes influence from psychedelic music and folk music with really unconventional sounds and textures as well as other instruments. A lot of later freak folk of the 90s and 2000s had a kind of weird but playful sound to it, like early Animal Collective. But a lot of early free folk where the term wasn't really coined yet had a very creepy and disturbing sound, like Comus and Exuma. Ilbient takes influence from hip hop production but combines it with a chilled out landscape of ambient music, usually an ambient soundtrack with hip hop drum beats and sampling. It will be in slang and hip hop for being good or well liked. It takes influence from trip hop as well as dub. Instrumental Ilbian is most common, but there are rappers who rap over Ilbian beats like Cloud Dead. There's not a ton of Ilbian music now, which is kind of a shame because there was some really cool music in this genre a while back. War metal is a style of death metal and black metal where guitars are tuned down and it's a more bass heavy sound with frequent guitar solos. Vocals are similar to growls of death metal. Lyrical topics are usually about war and the horrors that war can bring, including nuclear annihilation. EAI stands for Electro Acoustic Improvisation. It's characterized by a very slow moving physical texture aesthetic, often created using unconventional instruments like prepared guitars and turntables. This is all usually processed through some kind of computer. It takes influence from a lot of stuff like noise, drone, and experimental jazz. And finally, we end off with the most obscure of them all, which is Oinkyo. Oinkyo is a form of Japanese experimental music that focuses on the exploration of the physical traits of sound rather than music as a form of expression. Since Oinkyo is based solely on these actions of the musicians, the genre is inclusive to a variety of different musicians and aesthetics. Performances are still pretty minimal. There's frequent uses of silence. These performances are pretty out there, let's just say that. There's the album Good Morning, Good Night by Sachiko M, which is an album I do not like. It is hurts to listen to, but it's out there if you want to try it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That covers just about everything. I know I said at the beginning that this image would show every genre ever made, but that is a bit of a lie. I apologize. There were still tons of genres that weren't on this image that are real genres, real music is made. Here are a few of them just to give you some examples. 
So yeah, I mean, this video took a very long time to make. That's kind of why, like, I'm making an iceberg video in 2022. I know basically the whole trend is dead at this point. But I started working on this video, like, in June of 2020. And it's, I just was procrastinating so much. I, like, started writing and then I, like, uh, did the voiceover with the crappy mic I used in my earlier videos back in 2020. And then I just like gave up completely on the editing process. And then like six months later, I decided I wanted to redo it. And so I completely rewrote the script and I finally re-recorded it around like June. So there was even like a gap between the writing and recording. And in the whole editing, I probably started in like July and I, it did take me a really long time. I mean, there were definitely, there was definitely a lot of procrastination. But you know, I, I I'm I'm proud of I'm proud of this video. I think I did an okay job on it. Uh, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, you know, leave a comment down the below. Just tell me what you thought. You know, if I made some mistake, please let me know. And I mean, you can maybe like and subscribe, but you don't have to. No one's forcing you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm telling you, this video ruined my psyche. Before making this video, I only listened to Animal Crossing music. And now I can only listen to free jazz and electroacoustic music. Everything, nothing is the same anymore. My will to live has been erased. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.